everyone. Welcome to another episode of Buick Outdoors. I'm Sheldon Marion and on today's show we're going to be doing a catch, clean and cook on grouse. Hope you enjoy. Well for those of you that are new to hunting and uh, you want to get into it, a great way to start is by chicken hunting. All you need is a cheap .22 or a cheap shotgun, a couple boxes of bullets and you're out the door on your way. Um, there's several different types. There's rough grouse, blue grouse, which is also known as dusky grouse. Uh, there's sharp tail, ptarmigan, and spruce hen. Uh, <clears throat> around the Peace region, it's mainly spruce and rough grouse, and we do have some sharp tail, but not a lot. Uh, you definitely have to know which ones you're shooting at, because there's different bag limits for each one. But here, we're allowed a combined limit of 10 with uh, rough grouse and spruce hens uh, and then you can only shoot I believe it's three sharp tail but you don't really see sharp tail around here overly too much other than in the odd cut block uh, with the rough grouse they really like kind of this real thick crap in here it gives them a lot of coverage from the top so the owls and hawks they can't, uh, can't really get to them and then also uh, lynx, they uh, chase after them, so the lynx has a hell of a time running through this thick stuff so they can't really get to them, so they're kind of safe from predators that way. Uh, you will see some spruce hens in this stuff too. Uh, they they kind of like the real thick kind of swamp spruce kind of area. And the, then the sharp tail, they're mainly in... Uh, in big wide open cut blocks and those things they can fly for miles without stopping so they're really not too concerned about predators uh, the rough grouse they're kind of a grayish and brown color the spruce hen they're uh, they're more of a black and they have a little red piece right by their eye so that's very distinctive and then the sharp tail they're kind of like a real light brown almost yellow and their tail actually comes to a to a point that's why it's called a sharp tail but definitely check the hunting regulations or your core book or just check it out online uh, just so you know which species you're actually shooting hate to see you guys get a fine for having too many birds or whatever but I spooked up a couple of birds in this area here and uh, I shot two or three of them yeah three I got but they're in the truck and loaded up so we're gonna keep going down the road and see if we can find a couple more so far I'm just taking videos with the GoPro of shooting them but we'll see they they can be sometimes they're patient other times they like to fly away real soon so the time it takes to grab the camera set it all up zoom in on the chickens and then they're constantly moving too so doing this by myself not having a cameraman kind of thing it's it's not impossible to do it with this camera, but it's it'd be pretty hard. But anyways, we're going to keep going up the road here and see what else we can get. Nice little headshot. hear that one chirping in the tree there oh and there got him right in the head there so you want to get him with the 22 we aim for with the shotgun too but a lot of time with the shotgun Gotta make a mess of them. Well, I know there's a few more in here, so we'll uh, keep walking around. I spooked, I think, three of them, but we'll see. They usually don't fly too far. These are all spruce grouse or uh, rough grouse here. 
Let's go see if we can find some more. Shot. Another rough grouse. I like to reach underneath them and grab them by the leg. It's best to grab them both. You can hear another one chirping. But... Oh, see him. That's alright. Can't kill them all. You gotta leave some for next year. Alrighty guys, well we had a pretty decent little afternoon of chicken hunting. Went down my chicken road here and uh, ended up shooting four. Seeing probably closer to eight or nine, but they're all flying away and I don't get too antsy about it. You know, you gotta leave some for, for next year. But uh, what I'm gonna go over now is just how I like to clean my chickens. There's there's the traditional way where you spread their wings out and you put a foot on each of their wings, you grab them by their feet and you pull straight up. But when you have kind of conditions like this where it's it's just muddy and gross and a bunch of crap, I really don't want to put my chicken in the mud. So what I do is I grab them by their feet like this. And right here, this is their breast. And where the breast comes up to a point, right here, you just run your fingers along here. You can actually feel the tip right there. I grab there, and I just pull down. And that does that, it exposes the breast. So I pull all that away. And then right here, so this is kinda like their stomach, it's just a little sack that holds their food before it goes into the gizzard. Take my thumb, I just pull that out of the way. And then here, you have their throat, or it's kind of their spine. So what I do is I take one finger, and I'll put it in there. Then my other finger, I take it and I hook it underneath. It's kind of hard to see through the feathers and stuff. And then I just pull. And that way, you got the legs and all the guts inside, and then what you're left with, just a nice clean bird. And then inside, there's usually the heart and the uh, lungs. Lungs, I just throw them out, but the heart, my dogs absolutely love that. There's a little chicken heart. Hey, Rick. Come here. There, good boy. And then the last thing that I do here is I just kind of pretty it up a bit. So all these feathers, pull them off. Try to keep your meat as clean as possible. You don't gotta go too crazy. I just kind of go kind of to that first knuckle. And I do the same thing on the other side. And that way it's nice and clean, birds good to go. And then uh, if you're doing it out in the field like this, it's very important to keep one wing attached. This is just for identification. So if you get pulled over by a CO, if you have 10 birds, you can pull them all out. You can look at the wing, you can identify what type of bird it is by the wing. For me, I just leave them both on. It's doesn't really matter. And then you always want to have something nice and clean to put them in. Uh, usually a plastic bag or today I just got a paper bag. Went home hardware the other day to buy some nails. So use the bag. And then I'll show you how how quick it is here. When you're not explaining stuff I'll just quickly do it.
pretty well it takes longer to pull off all the extra feathers as it does to actually clean the bird so it's uh for me it's a lot cleaner it's a lot faster than doing it the old way uh this way it is harder for some women and young kids to do because you need a little bit of strength in your hands to do it but for the most part anybody can do it and uh yeah you're left with a nice clean bird so i got one more to clean up here and then uh I guess we'll turn it back on once as we uh, get home into the kitchen. And remember, keep the wings on. Don't want to see you guys get a fine for that. Alrighty, see you in the kitchen. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen here. Uh, when I got home from the chicken hunt, I brought all of our chickens inside and I snipped off the wings and I put them into a bowl of cold water, threw them into the fridge overnight. Uh, that way it uh, just removes any body heat that's left in it and it also helps clean up the last little bit of feathers that are on them. Uh, so now what I'll do is I'll change up the camera so I can show you guys how I take the meat off the bones and then uh, we'll start cooking from there. So I take the chicken out of the bowl there and I grab a paper towel and I wipe it off nice and clean and dry it off make sure there's no uh, feathers on there. And inside here, you have kind of the wishbone right here. It kind of comes down like a Y. So what I do, I take my knife and I run it down both sides. All the way to the back. And I come down each side. Then I put my thumb in here. And this is your chicken breast. That's your chicken tender. And then inside, I just follow that low ridge down. And it pops it off. And then, uh, if you want, pull that out. There's your chicken tender. There's your chicken breast. So I'll do the other side. There you go, there's one chicken done. Alrighty, so we got our uh, chicken all sliced up and ready to go. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with a preheated pan, put in cold oil. And then we're just going to toss our chicken in there. You just want to get that meat nice and browned up. And then once it's all browned up, we'll throw in the onions, get them cooked up a little bit, and we'll uh, move on to the vegetables. Well, the chicken is starting to look pretty good, so now I'm going to add our uh, onion. I got about half of a big white onion here. I went ahead and I pre-sliced everything up so you don't have to watch me do all that boring shit. We'll just toss her in, spin them around a bit and let them sweat out and then we'll toss in uh, the vegetables. So now that we got the uh, onions sweated out and they're starting to soften up now, I'm going to toss in our vegetables. Uh, what I got here is I got some bok choy, cabbage, red pepper, mushrooms and then broccoli. I'm just going to toss it in all at the same time, then also have a bag of uh, snap peas that I'll put in there as well. I'm 
then just some peas. I'm trying to make this as simple as possible so I'm not putting any seasoning in it and eventually what we'll do is we'll put in this VH sauce uh, try a new one today it's orange ginger make a whole pile of ones uh, the teriyaki ones really good so we'll make, get this all mixed in and once they start to uh, kind of soften up we'll throw in the sauce We'll turn on water for our noodles, and then we'll cook up the noodles, and we'll be pretty well good to go. So our vegetables here now, they're not quite soft, but still have a bit of a crunch to them. But it's perfect time to throw in our sauce, and then that way they can kind of finish cooking just in the sauce. And again, it's the VH uh, Orange Ginger. Then once we get this all mixed in, we'll just let her uh, sit and simmer for a few minutes while we wait for the noodles to cook. The water's almost boiling, so then, uh, we'll get to that one here next. So our water is boiling now, so I'll grab my noodles and I'll toss them in there. Uh, the ones I use are these parquet steam fried noodles. Pretty well once your water starts boiling, open these up, throw it in there. And you let them cook for about two or three minutes and they're nice and soft. Uh, if you don't have noodles, this works great for rice as well. Just gotta give that a uh, couple minutes to cook, then we'll dish it all up. Alright, so the noodles are all cooked. They're strained out back into the pots, and all we gotta do now is just uh, dish the plate up. And there you have it. Pretty, uh, pretty nice, quick, easy stir fry. All made with rough grouse and uh, real basic, basic ingredients. So hope you enjoyed that, and uh, you head out and choose some chickens and try a new recipe. See you on the next one.